All right, guys, we're gonna um, we're gonna start in a couple minutes. I just figured I'll give a few more minutes for people to get here, and um, I'm just getting my <laughs> materials ready. <clears throat> I just want to let you guys know that there's there's a little bit of a delay. Um, if you ask questions, it might be take a few minutes. Hey guys, a few minutes to to see them um, or to read them. So just leave them in there. We have a few people that are moderating. Oh, Justin, <laughs> they're moderating the the chat, so they might be able to help out with the answers to the questions. Um, but just just so you know, there's a little bit of a delay when. We're speaking to where the the fly tying is. So if you if um um you know just leave your questions in there and we will get to them when we get towards the end. And to be honest with you, this is my first live fly tying, so I'm a little bit nervous. But um, let me let me take this off the screen. <laughs> All right. So hopefully you guys can see this. Um, see this clearly and so like I said this is this is my first time doing the live feed um, so just just bear with me I'm gonna try to get this a little bit um, a little clear before we start I know there's a few people that are still coming in okay so I'm gonna be tying I'm gonna be tying a few different flies that I like to fish for for bass and for um for trout and stuff. But mostly a lot of bass fishing. I do a lot of smallmouth fishing, fishing on the lakes and things. And that's what I did for a long time before I even fished for trout. It was mostly just just a lot of a lot of lake lake fishing. Um so these flies here and one thing I tell everyone when I'm teaching is if you're tying something and i'm going to put the the material list in the description once we're finished um if you're tying if you're tying along you're tying anything with anyone and you don't have what you need just use whatever you have it's not you know it's not really it's more about the technique and what you're doing than having exactly what the other person is using so we're gonna first the first the first fly we're gonna tie oh actually I can actually see the I can see the questions as they pop up, so I'll try to answer them. Hey Ed, I'll try to answer them as we're going. Um, okay, so this this fly here is I don't really know. I know there's a lot of you know you got to name your flies. I just call them the fly, but this this is a a fly that I fish pretty often for for trout and for bass. But I'll weight it with a little more weight when I'm fishing it deeper in the water but this is good for you know when the water's a little bit clearer and it's a little bit shallower um and it can go as a as a crayfish or as a um you know as a small bait fish so this pattern here let me put this in i'll grab my hooks we are going to be tying this on a partridge streamer hook so we're going to be doing this on a Archer's an ideal streamer hook. We're gonna use a number six. And to be to be honest with you, and I don't know if if my friend Mike is watching this, but I would love to give you guys the actual size of the dumbbell eyes that I'm using. But because I store a lot of things like this, I'm not I'm not quite sure, but I will look for the package. So you can kind of grab whatever you have that that works. Um, that fits it's not too big it's not going to crowd the eye but so we're going to tie this guy on a ideal streamer hook yeah this is this is a good this is a good hook uh for this pattern because it's it's not too close i mean you know like sure you might say this is a little long but you can also you can go longer I just wouldn't go any shorter than this i like this one because when you're tying it it's gonna you get a lot of movement and the hook, the hook point's not in the way. All right. 
and you guys are good you can see pretty clear all right so once you get your hook in there you're gonna you're gonna start your thread and this is a black uh six aught um thread you're gonna start it about an eye length behind the the hook eye Justin, is it ideal? Yes, it's, it's very ideal. Uh, partridge ideal hook. <laughs> All right, let me... I wonder if I can zoom in a bit. Technical difficulties. What do they call this? Operator error? Maybe that'll be a little better. All right. So you're going to make a small thread dam. Get some feathers stuck to your scissors, you know. <laughs> you're going to... All right, now once you get your eyes on here, what I like to do is I just build up a little a little bump in the middle, and then I'll put the eyes on straight, take a few wraps, and when you let them go, they're going to turn on themselves a little bit, and then you can start to wrap over and around. And as long as you get them in there, there's not a huge... You know, I mean, there's a lot of ways to do it. You want to go around. You want to figure eight. You want to go up and over. However you do it, just keep them from... You want to keep them from spinning. So you want to get them tight around the hook. And then what I do is I'll take some resin. Hey, Adam. <laughs> I'll take some resin and I'll put a little bit um, right in here. This is Raid Zap. And as they say, don't stare at the blue light, purple light, whatever color we got here. All right. All right, now, so this, when you're tying this, a lot of, I do, I use a lot of marabou and I don't always palmer it. I kind of just pinch it and throw it in there and I'll show you as we're going. So back here, you can call them tails. I honestly, I call them ears because it looks like a little rabbit. But, uh, you know, so your tail feathers, I tie them in where they're flat. So they're not going, they're not turned side th this way. So here's the, the eye of the hook. They're actually up and down, so they flop like this. So what you're going to grab, what I have here is, I got a freshwater streamer saddle. And there's a few ways to, to do this. So a lot of the times when you're tying... You know, when you're using your material, you always try to use the size that fits and what you have. But, like, when I first started, I bought a lot of stuff that just everything. Honestly, like, I just bought everything <laughs> at dollar store, you know, just clearance bins. And you don't have what you need. So, for a lot of these flies, instead of using, say, this size down here, that would work great for the tails. If I don't have that, and sometimes you guys may not have that size, go with the bigger ones. And I'll tell you why. Because the way you're going to tie this is you're going to palmer the front and the front you can use this so when you hang on let me show you so instead of instead of using the size that fits exact grab one that doesn't grab one that's way too long um like this so this is this is too long and sometimes that's all you're going to have so get a few of those and what you're going to do to tie your tails in once you got your feathers ready to go so you have all this here so what you really want you're going to run your thread down the hook shank and to keep these propped a little bit you're going to use some dubbing it doesn't matter what color I, you can try to match it if you want I wish I could get this color to stay here Okay. so you're going to just grab a pinch of something and just put it right Right in the back. All right. Ooh. Just to get these in. All right. So now you got your feathers, the longer ones. And you're going to take these guys. You're going to measure them. You want them to be, I don't know, maybe a hook, hook and a half. Let me see what this guy is. All right. So you want them to you want them to come over the back of the hook. 
about one hook shank. So let's go right to the eye of the hook. You're going to measure about one and a half because you're going to be tying it in here. So at the one and a half length of the hook shank, cut that piece off and just, just check it. Make sure it's good. Make sure the size is good. Cut your second one off the same size and keep those extra pieces that you cut. Don't throw them out. Don't stick them in a scrap bin. Just leave them sitting there. All right. So you're going to tie these in. And I strip off just a little bit on either side. And when I tie them in, you're going to see there's a curve to the feather. And what you want is you want the curve to curve up with the curve of the hook. So you don't want it to go down. So you're going to find that curve and you're going to put it in on the side. And don't worry if it's moving. We're going to fix that in a second. Grab your other guy. You're going to strip the strip some of these fibers off. All right. You're going to tie that in on the other side. All right. Now I come up underneath to push them up from the bottom. So they almost look like bumblebee wings. Okay. Now let's see what we got next. You're going to move all right, so now the colors on this, I don't know how to keep these from staying. So the colors on this are up to you. You can you can do, I always like olive. Olive and grizzly is always a good color. So what you're going to do next is, oh, let's put some flash on here. So grab some flash. I use, you got the crinkle flash. You got the whatever's laying in the bench or half laying in your cup of coffee. Just grab that and uh, you're going to tie that in. And you can pinch wrap it or you can do the loop around the thread. And when you do, when you, when you put this on here, the best way to, to get your flash onto this, onto the thread is really just to put it behind and hold it with your finger. And once it's here and you can do this with rubber legs, everything, just swipe your finger to the side and now you have it and you can put it where you want it. And we're going to trim that too. So just push everything back. And trim these guys a little bit. All right. Now. So now you're going to grab your marabou and... The first few, the first few areas on this fly, I don't palmer them because I have a tendency to be a little <laughs> heavy handed with the palmering. So just grab a, grab your feather off here and you're going to just pinch them. So the, these marabou feathers, there's so much feathers. There's so much material on here. Grab a pinch on the side and just pull it off. And once you rip it off, you can put this anywhere you want. You can use it for tails. You can, you can... You know, so you're going to put this in the back, tie it in, and then grab another pinch. And what's nice about this is you can tie your flies with a red belly. You can tie your flies with, well, you can pretty much put it where you want it. You don't have to be stuck with one color in one spot. All right, so to start this, you just pinch a couple in, and you're going to pull this off here. Oops. Okay. Now you can take your next guy and you're gonna grab another one and you can you can grab whatever's around, but what you're gonna do when you palmer these is you wanna grab them and smooth out the ends where the point is. I mean this you would use for a tail, but for the most part you're gonna grab here on the tip and you're gonna pull the fibers back. And then you're going to tie that in by the tip facing forward. All right, so here we go. And then you're going to wrap. <clears throat> you're going to wrap forward and pull. 
pull some of them down. But what you what I want is I want the body to flatten out a bit. So when you tie it in by the tip and you bring it up and over, you're basically just making a marable body. So flatten that section out and come forward. And then you're going to cut that piece off. <clears throat> All right. All right, and again, another piece. And a lot of this is just, you can switch the colors up here. You're, you're really just going from one end of your fly to the next with just a whole batch of marabou. <laughs> All right, so now that you got that body flattened underneath, grab a few more, tie them in. I usually wait to the end to cut them off. So instead of palmering them, just pinch them up and over and tie them in. All right, and now you can trim off a lot of this and just watch your thread. I cut mine, it happens. All right, and now bring that around the eyes a little bit just to clean the head of your fly up. All right, now those pieces that you took off when you first cut your um, cut your tail section. So now you, this is what's left. A lot of times this is this ends up in in the trash or ends up on the floor and you forget about it. But um, strip off the bottom end. And even these, I save this stuff for gills or something. So you're going to strip that off because now we're going to do the front. We're going to palmer the front. So when you have these longer feathers that you're saving, um, here where these are, these fibers are stiffer, you don't want these. You're going to cut, not for this fly, you don't want them. So you're going to snip, snip a good amount of those off. And actually, I'm going to tie this in backwards. Um, so we're going to start right behind the eye. Oh. And then grab your... <coughs> pliers that are buried <laughs> through here all right and you're going to bring this down down and up and as you come up you're gonna just brush those fibers back a little bit and it always looks like a mess that's how especially with the marble that's how it is all the time till you brush it back so then snip that piece off And your end. Okay, and then you're gonna brush these back and same thing, just mat down whatever was behind there. Cause we're gonna do one more. Right behind those uh, dumbbell eyes. All right. <clears throat> So grab your next one. And depending on how your feather is, you can tie it in by the tip or the stem, depending on what's left over. This one here is going to go in by the front. So there's many ways to do the same thing. You don't have to be tied down to one technique or one anything. You know, you can watch the same per you can watch 10 people tie the same fly and you're going to learn 10 different things, which is, you know, which is the best part about this, especially when you let your <laughs> let your feathers go and uh they flop around the hook all right so grab these hey steve how are you i just looked down for a minute all right so you're going to bring this up and around and tie that off and when you when you're tying off something like this that's a mess the best thing to do is bring your material around for the last time and then just switch switch hands and bring it up and over and then you can let it go. This looks like my hair in the morning. All right. So now, Justin. <laughs> All right. So bring these down. Pull these back. Whoop. All 
All right, so now you can see, let me cut this off. Where it's getting more of the, the profile in here that we're looking for. And then you can cut off whatever the, you know, the excess in the front. And it doesn't, it bothers us more than the fish until you cut your thread. But, um, all right. So trim this up. And these are, these are nice because they're lightweight. Um, and you can throw some weight underneath them and fish them. Whoop. <laughs> so we don't have any sound effects for these, uh, these movements of this camera. Okay. So the other thing I want to show you guys, let me, actually, while we have this here, let me pull this back and whip finish. Marabou is messy and it's a pain and you always see people like licking their fingers and stuff. And even like before COVID, it was like always like a kind of like, ew, what the heck? Like, you don't know what's on these. The marabou's died with all kinds of things. But um, so what I keep is I keep it's a little full of feathers now. If you keep a little cup, buy a sponge and just cut it in a little square and then put a little bit of water on it. And then you can tap your fingers and you can. You can smooth out your flies without having to actually like touch your fingers or your mouth. Oh. Hey, Britta, how are you? <laughs> All right, so these. All right, so this guy is pretty much done. And we're going to whip finish, pull this out of here, and we'll just groom it a little bit. So once this is finished here, so now you can see your, so some of your marabou is a little bit longer than you may want it. And if that's the case, don't cut it. Just grab it with your fingers and rip it off and it'll curl. It's fine. It's like curling ribbon or something. Um, so that is... I don't know. I guess you could, we were calling this the bass crawler. I don't really know what to call it. It's, but it's a great pattern for bass and small mouth and large mouth and, and trout. Pretty much anything that'll, anything that'll eat it. Um, I don't know if you guys want me to just check through the comments or do you want me to go on to the next one? What do you, <laughs> would you have any requests? <laughs> I would like to tie something smaller. Um, I don't know how clear it would be. Maybe we should. All right. So let's see here. What time is it, you guys? Now, hey, Steve. What uh, what time is it now? We got time for a few more. All right. Okay. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> Tom. All right. So I'm gonna tie. And I gotta find my my hooks on. All right, I'm gonna tie an isonychia. I'm gonna tie. Now that I see it, it should be pretty clear. You guys will be able to see this. Um, and I'm gonna tie a soft tackle. I'm gonna tie an iso soft tackle. <clears throat> this wasn't planned so give me a sec <laughs> i gotta grab my hooks all right so i'm gonna grab a partridge what's good here good all right i'm gonna do a size 10 we're gonna do a size 10 ideal nymph hook for this because the isos they they're a little bit larger, which is nice. And these these flies, I fish. Um, I fish a lot of soft tackles. And to be honest with you, a lot of people ask me, you know, did you start fishing soft tackles because you know you love them and they're so great and all these things. And to be honest with you, when I first started tying flies, I fished and tied a lot of soft tackles because I have no money, and it was cheaper. <laughs> it was the cheapest material I could find that would go the longest way. Um, and then I just really love tying them. So it kind of went hand in hand. Uh, let me move this a little closer. All right. 
So this fly here we're going to tie is an ISO soft hackle fly. And I think that should clear up a little bit. All right. So we're tying this on an ideal nymph hook. And we're going to start your thread <clears throat> behind the eye and run it down. Run it down um, almost to about the hook point. We're going to cut that off. And now... All right, so sorry about that. <clears throat> so there's a few different. There's a few. Honestly, you can use anything brown. I my one of my favorite brown soft hackles is the uh, the wild type brown. Um, but this also will work well. This is the hen saddle. <clears throat> it's the Coctelion in speckled brown. So anything that has uh, my favorite thread. My fa my favorite thread. It's probably just six out. I think. Um, cause I tie a lot of streamers, but <clears throat> I don't have Justin, you make me so nervous. <laughs> Good. So, uh, um, yes. Yeah, so this guy here, you're going to tie, um, you're going to grab some of the feathers for the back for the, for the tail. So the first thing you want to do, let's, let me just backtrack for a second. Cause I'm kind of, I get all over the place when you're tying any soft tackles, you're going to have a lot of different you're going to have a lot of good looking feathers and you're always going to have a couple that like this guy here, you know, that's me taking it in and out of the package. It gets dented. These are the first ones I grab when I pull them out because I'm going to use them for tailing. I'm going to use them for anything that I'm not wrapping. So a lot of times my stuff gets ruined um, when I move things around, but something like this that you're not going to wrap, save that, use it for your tails, use it for um, a wing case, use it for anything. So what we're going to do now is, I'm actually going to grab the wild type brown. All right. So you got your thread started. And you're going to need, so you're going to need a few things for this fly that um, are what going to set it apart from just a regular nymph floating around. So what you need is, you can use either a big fly, you can use any type of large white thread, you can use a wax thread, or you can just use a 3 out. and you're going to cut a piece of this off. You have nothing, if you can't find anything, you can use dental floss. You mainly just need something because you want to make that stripe. That's going down the back. All right. So once you have this in, same thing you're going to use. You're going to put the material behind. Slide it up. I'm doing this a little weird because I have the camera in front of me. Okay. And now you're going to bring that down. And you're going to stop this right from across from where the hook barb, the hook bar would be. Next, you want to grab... Some wire so here I have some gold um, copper I got some some copper fine wire I'm gonna tie that in the back also whoop <laughs> I'm trying to see I'm trying not to pinch wrap so you guys can see but that's not really the way to do it okay so you're gonna pinch wrap this in So you have your wire in the back and you have your thread in the back. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to grab your dubbing. <clears throat> so here I'm using a, um, a flash nymph. You can use, you can use, you know, a brown. You want to, what you want is you want a brown mixed with a little bit of red. Um, so I'll take, I'll take two different types and I'll mix them together. And before, so when you pull a pinch out of the pack, you don't want to put this in like this. Um, you can't tie this in like this because it's, it's a bunch. So what you want to do is you want to first pull it in half. 
and then you want to spread it out a little bit a little bit more a little bit more because you want to flatten it out so once you get that dubbing flattened out you're gonna I usually turn my vise a little bit and so you're gonna bring that up right behind the back of the thread and you're gonna start spinning and when you're when you're putting in dubbing you want to spin it from the top as you pull the dubbing down and that's gonna keep it keep it locked in there All right, you're gonna take to give you wraps, bring it up, and then you're gonna you're gonna adjust it. It comes off, it falls off. You don't always have to have it perfect the first time. Just uh, when that happens, just fix it. Keep going. Get a few other colors stuck in there because you always leave your dubbing box open. All right. <laughs> All right. So now <clears throat> you're gonna keep going. You want to go about. Um, I don't know, about two-thirds of the way up, give or take. So there, you're about two-thirds of the way up here. And now you want to bring your thread. You want to bring your white thread up to the front here. So the best way, I'll turn this way so you guys can see. Um... So the best way to do that is you can actually split it either around the wire if the wire is getting in your way. Or you can just hold it in the front. Take one loose wrap just to keep it in place. Maybe two, I don't know. All right. Now, you're going to bring your wire up and over that. Let me try to turn this so you can see. So you want about maybe four or five evenly spaced turns. Bring it up to the top and just throw your, <clears throat> you're gonna throw your thread over the top of that. Now you have the wire and you have the thread here. Pull them back, take a few wraps. And you're gonna cut those off and just make sure you cut with the back. Don't use the front of your front of your scissors. Why is this so bright? Alright. What a mess. Hold on. <laughs> I keep looking at I keep looking at the, the brightness here, but alright. So now once you get to the front here. You're going to take just a little bit more dubbing just to keep that gap that's there. Right in the front, you're going to just cover that up. So the next thing you want to do is you want to, I'll put some pictures up of these because the color is really off right now. I'm sorry if it looks a little orange and a little orangey uh, brown. But once you grab your, your hackle feathers, you want to get something that is, let me find that one. All right. So now when you tie these in, I'm actually going to show you. I know, I know. See, once I start talking, I get like a little, I, I guess it's sidetracked. I don't know. But I know we're talking about like tying things with a little bit of tips to help you in here. So I figure that what I'm going to show you is a better way. Like, you know, you don't always have the feathers that match. Like this feather, the hackle on this is too big. And the best way to measure when you're not sure is to grab your feather by the tip and brush the ha brush the uh, brush the fibers back and once you brush them down you're gonna see this gap in here 
And if you put it up against the hook shank, you're going to see how big that is. You're going to be able to tell right away if those feathers would work because you're going to make this V and you sit it right in front of your hook shank. So now you can see how long they would be without having to measure them, without having to, to cut them. Because I know with the dry flies, you know, you use a hackle gauge. But for this, just, you know, you just guess. And this is a pretty, <laughs> this is actually not a bad guess. But so if you don't have them that fit, there's a few different ways to do it. But let's try these guys. So pull your fibers from the tip. You're going to pull them up. You're going to pull off this fluff on the bottom. All right. So now... Pull your fibers down, and you can see here, just like this, they're too long. Way too long. All right. So what you're going to do is... <clears throat> you're going to... Actually, you could do a dubbing loop also. But... All right, snip the front off. Tie them in just like you were going to normally. But not like that. I don't know why I get... <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, I do. I save, I, save the, uh, I save the fluff for um, the gills. When I'm, tie when I'm tying ISO nymphs and I want the gills, um, I'll tie them like that. But all right, so let me <laughs> do it like this. So take your, take your feather... And you're going to take the whole piece here that's too long. And you're going to turn it towards the front of your fly. So if you have, if your feathers are too long, like we said, and I'm going to side backtracking just because I, I dropped everything. So you, you pulled your stuff out here and you realize that these, they're too long. You can't use them. You can use them. You're just going to use them a little, a little differently. So turn them to the front, snip out a piece of them here. And you're going to tie them in facing the front. So now that V is facing the front. And is this like, is this a great way to do it? I don't know. But we don't always have what we need. So you're going to bring this to the front. You're going to bring those fibers around the hook eye just a little bit. And you're going to cut back. Hang on. I get to talking and Ed knows, Ed knows I start talking and I don't tie. Sometimes, sometimes I spend the whole day organizing and he tied 40 flies and I tied zero. All right. So once you get these, these fibers all in the front now, because they were the two long ones, you're going to push them back. So now when you push these back and you wrap over, now they're facing, hang on. Now they're going to splay around the hook. So that's one way you can use those um, if you don't have the ones that you need. Yeah, I know. Ed. How many flies did you tie? Zero. I tied zero. But I did organize the fly tying bench for six days straight, so that's good. Um, it's still not... If you saw it now, it looks like a tornado ripped through it. I guess I'm the tornado, but all right, so... Let's finish this fly. So grab your grab your feather. You're going to grab it by the tip, and you're going to pull these fibers down. Now, these will fit. So as you can see, if you bring them right up against the front, this is a good way to measure. So you're going to pull them down, hold them in front. They look good, and you're going to cut it off so it looks like a Christmas tree. <clears throat> then you're going to bring this up. Tie this in. All right, let me just pinch her up. I know I'm trying not to for the sake of video. All right, so up into your fingers and pull down. All right, so now you got this here. This is how you want to wrap these guys. So you're going to grab your pliers or you can use your hands. It's up to you. And grab this by the front here. You're going to come down and up. And as you come up, you're going to pull these fibers back up and around into the front. And then before you cut everything off, before I cut anything off, I pull everything back and take a few 
Just a few wraps in the front. Tornado Alley. <laughs> My whole bench is Tornado Alley. It's we it's when you it's nice when you organize everything, but it doesn't always it doesn't last long. Like right now, oops, I just turned my head and dropped that. If you guys, you know, while I'm while I'm rambling on, <clears throat> when you guys are tying uh, and you get towards the front, and like for example, if you let this go and this is gonna fall off, turn your vice upside down. So when you whip finish, you don't have you're not trying to whip finish on a slope. Not everybody wants to take their fly and put it in and out. Just turn. Turn it over, make your head, turn your vice upside down. And now, when you whip finish, you're not doing it down on an angle. You are, you have that to help you keep it from falling down. Whoop. I don't know what, I don't know. I had so much coffee today. I don't know what we were going to be tying, because... I just got a little bit hyper and started grabbing material. But um, if you guys have seen me tie in person, it's kind of the same thing. It's really not. <laughs> it's, it's all over the place. I have people come in and they're, you know, they have have um, questions and stuff. And it's nice to go to a show, which I miss the shows because people come and they, you know, you have a problem and you say, hey, can you show me how to do this? Or even me, I go to somebody else's table. Someone will come to my table and say, can you show me how to do this? And I'll say, you know what? I know somebody that can do it better. Let's both go. Let's both go ask them. And now the both of us just learned something that we both wanted to know better. Um, but somebody just actually texted me. I guess you guys are what that is watching. You guys are watching about the quills, the Polish quills. Um, I know some of you were asking, mess, sending me messages about us talking about having trouble tying them in. And I think this, actually, this, like, tutorial night is turning into, like, uh, you know, like, answer some questions night, which is really actually a lot of fun. So if you have any questions, stick them in the the comments, and I'll try to see if while we're sitting here I can, I can help with anything, because it's kind of nice. This is actually, it's actually a little bit easier for me than to try to concentrate on uh, one pattern. All right, guys, so the, the Polish quills... And the quill bodies. This is... I'm going to get a bigger hook in here. So, um... <clears throat> what happens is... What happens is when you're tying in those Polish quills... The biggest problem that happens is not... When you tie them in. It's your first wrap. So the first wrap that you take... And I'm going to show you right now. Depending on how you take that first wrap... Is how your entire body is going to look. So it's not that you're doing it wrong. That's not what it is. Um... Let me show you now. All right, so these... <laughs> Justin, <laughs> you got to put on a, you got to put on a wig and some temporary tattoos and you can hang out on my in my seat. All right, so when you're using any of the quill bodies, it doesn't matter if it's a stripped quill or if it's one that you stripped yourself. I wonder if I should get a lighter one. Um so maybe you guys can see here. So when you look at these, one side has a dark stripe on it and one side doesn't. And I've had a lot of messages um, asking me, why is yours backwards? I did it the way it showed it. I did it the way, you know, you showed me and someone else showed me, but it's not the same. So it's not that you're doing it wrong. You're probably doing it exactly the same way. But what happens is, so let's put this, I'll start the thread just to show you. So when you tie these in, and you'll hear people say there's there's a, a right and a wrong way, and the right and wrong way is however it looks in the end that you like. This like, because I actually it turns out I do things backwards, but that's all right. So, all right. So when you tie these in, you got a black stripe on top or bottom. So. You're going to take your quill and you're going to cut off this excess. When you tie this in, so for right now, I'm going to tie this in with the black stripe on the top. And I use this thread because it splays out and it makes a nice flat underbody. But so when you, all right, 
when you use this material and you're trying to wrap it forward, what happens is that first wrap that you take, when you pick this up, that material is going to fold. Right now, and it's probably hard to see, um, I'll put some photos up in the description later, that material folding over on top of itself. And whether it folds, so if that material is folding and you wrap forward, right now, your black stripe is on the left side. And it's going to stay on the left side all the way to the front. Now, if you let this go and you tie that in, and when you take your first wrap, you bring it down and under, now your black stripe is on the right. And now your body is going to be more solid color. So this is why I try to tell people, that when, I know you get frustrated. I get too because like I break, <laughs> I break things. But it's not that you're doing things wrong. Um, you, you're just, you're doing it different. So if you do that, like right now, I brought that material under and over and the black stripes on the right. So it's not that you're doing it wrong. It's just, just, just adjust how you're doing it because you know, you learn different from different people. And that first wrap, and it's the same thing with turkey biots. The same thing's going to happen. The first wrap that you take, it's going to do that too, whether you put the material under it or you slide the material over itself. Um, it's going to do the same thing. So what? what <laughs> yeah, the dubbing loops. The dubbing loops are a great way to use the, the uh, excess material with that and you can use them you can strip one side and uh use that for gills like if you're tying when you're tying nymphs once you have the fluff that you have under here you pull all this off and you tie it in so say you came up here and you just tie it in you just wrap it just wrap it in and bring it forward and you're going to put this right underneath everything all right so what are we what are we tying next what do you guys, hold on. All right. So this here, yeah, the fish don't care. It's, we're our own worst critics. Like people look at a fly and they say, oh, wow, it looks so nice. Your picture looks great. I have 20 of them sitting in a jar that I hated. I hate it. The fish didn't hate it. I hate it. I have OCD. And, you know, so it's, that's more what it is. <clears throat> so here's another pattern using the marabou and flash that I'm going to show you guys. Um, my bird has awesome little by <laughs> So this pattern here, what you call it, I don't know. It's, you know, let me move this up a little. <clears throat> I think that should be clear. All right, so we have we got marabou, we have some fish skulls, and these these are nice. If you're fishing lakes, um, I've actually thrown these through the ice. The colors are different, though. I just, I use purple that day. I use a lot of red, um, red and orange, green, perch colors, I hit it with a marker. Uh, but this fly here is great for lakes. You can fish it on a, on a sinking line um, or like a versa leader. Something like that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, the colors are nice. I mean, I, I wonder what the fish see. You know, maybe they don't see. Maybe we'll never know until they tell us. But yeah, the colors the colors are good. And you guys can change these to whatever works for you. So let me grab our hooks. <clears throat> this one's for Justin. They're not ideal, but they do have attitude, right? How hard do you throw them? Well, uh, usually, uh, usually I walk out a bit, fall through, make the hole, and then just start jigging with them, you know? <laughs> we had some guy, he was doing some ice sculptures the other day, big ones over here. All right, so this fly, we're going to be using the <clears throat> Attitude Streamer Hook. It's a, a number two. And just check your packages when you guys are using them. You'll see in the corners for here we're using the bait fish. You're going to see that right here it's going to tell you the hook range and you want to try to match that up a bit so we have a two and a two so a two odd and a two odd 
Um, and always with these, you want to um, make sure you leave burning through hooks. Oh, I have, I know, I got to clean this mess, Ed. All right, so you want to make sure you leave room in the front. Um, when you get to the front of this hook, you want to make sure you have room for the head of this, the fish skull because you don't want to crowd the eye. All right, so let me grab my thread. And we're going to use that freshwater streamer and um, some from the uh, predator pack. All right, so you're going to start your thread. You're going to start it behind... Honestly, you can probably start it anywhere because we're not we're not going to be tying up that way yet. So start it about halfway. Stop across from the barb, and you're going to cut this. You're going to cut this off. All right. So this this fly here, I don't start. I don't start the material at the end. I start it in the middle. So if you're looking in here, you're going to see. I'll pull this back. See where it started? Almost about halfway. <clears throat> so you're going to turn this over. Now you're going to grab your... So this is the, the Grizzly, the freshwater streamer, streamer saddle. And I'm going to try to grab them. So in the front here, they're more... They're a little... St the fibers are stiffer towards the front, so flip these guys over. And see what's in the back. You want something somewhere in between. So like this is good. Because you have. You got a little bit of mix of both. So come to the side. Around the side. In the back end. These are great for like Matuka flies back in here. These big stuff. But you want to come right in the side of your saddle. So grab two of those. And then you're going to grab another. And you don't need the exact colors. Whatever. Whatever colors um, you guys want. I'm going to use the purple for this. Or blue. So these, these are nice because you get a half. You get a half and a half. So you can mix your colors up. Same thing with this. I'm going to go somewhere in between. These here where there's a little bit stiffer. And then the back end. They're super soft. So I try to pick from somewhere about in the mid-range. For this fly, anyway. <laughs> Justin. Justin, we're going to do the... do. The, oh, thank you. We're going to... Uh, I know. I, I I apologize for the rambling. I just... This is... I'm so... This is how I tie it to shows. I'm, there's there's so much to learn and so much to teach. And, you know, I people come to my table at the shows and... You know, they, they'd say, well, I do it different. I'm like, well, show me. That's awesome. You know, everybody can learn from each other. All right, so you're going to grab your feathers. You're going to get, let's say these guys are good. Pull these out. We got to do our, our blindfolded fly tying live. See what happens, Just <laughs> You can instruct me, and I'll instruct you on how to tie a pattern and, and, uh, we can't see anything. All right. So here we go now. We got about halfway. Well, uh, no more than halfway. All right. So you're going to start about a one hook eye behind, and you're going to stop by across from the point. And once again, same as before, grab just a little bit of dubbing, whatever's laying around, and um, let's find something laying around. <clears throat> <laughs> oh yeah, Kelly. <laughs> Kelly, I gotta give you the 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 bench tour. This place is. I should give you guys the whole fly tying bench tour before I disconnect, and you can see what I mean about the. Right now, everything's everywhere. All right, so turn this over, and this is gonna help. Just keep your. Um, I don't know what color this is. It's laying on the bench. Just grab a little. It's gonna help keep your feathers from splaying. All right, so you have, you got four in the back, back here. You got two grizzly and you got two purple. So you can either tie them in all together or cut them in into twos. But either way, you're going to grab them, you're going to measure them. And <clears throat> bring them up, up to the back. All right. 
So you're going to bring them over the top of the hook. And when you measure, you're not back here. So just measure about a hook shank in length and bring them back to where you tied in your dubbing. You're going to pinch wrap, tie them in. I'm not going to cut this off yet. I'm going to use it underneath. All right, so these guys are tied in. Same thing, you're going to grab your two grizzly feathers. And put them, put them together. So you're going to measure. Measure to about the same length. So you can grab them up here. Bring them towards the back. Um, you know what? You can tie these in together. So tie them in. Right here. And after that first wrap, just pull them one on either side. Instead of tying them in together and they're going to go up and down. Put them together. Move them to the side. And now... Wrap over a little bit of this because you're going to cut it off anyway, but just to just so it doesn't get pulled out over here. Take a few wraps and you're going to snip that off. And save all this. You can do a lot of stuff with it. <laughs> you can keep a lot of flash stuck to your scissors, you know. All right. <clears throat> so cover this up. All right. We're going to put a little flash in here after so and there's not there's not a lot of material on this fly it looks like there's a lot but to be honest with you i didn't palm or anything everything was pinch wrapped for the most part it's not as much as it looks like so you're going to grab now that this is in here you're going to keep moving forward a little bit at a time you're going to grab your grab your marabou and all right so this, this here let's grab a pinch pull some off Grab the connecting piece, and you're going to pinch wrap this in. That might be a little bit much, but you can slide it around. Some people, they don't like to palm, or sometimes I don't have the patience for it because it's, it's all over. But see, if you pinch wrap it like that and you slide it, you have the same, you got the same thing going on that if you palm it, but you have more control and you don't have as much all over the place. All right, so cover that up, move up just a little bit. And now grab your next color here. I had some black, so I'm gonna grab some, grab some marabou here, same as before. And this is also a good way to use the, if you have some scraps laying around, um, just, just pinch them and throw them in there. They go a long way. All right, so grab a pinch, put that on. And every time you put a little bit more on, see the gap right there? You want that because you don't want it to be too heavy. So put in a pinch, keep moving forward. Like I said, doing it like this, you can have a red throat. You can have, you can have a, a thing on the back. You can but just however you want to do it. All right, so there. So this very, very little because we're going to wrap some flash in the front. All right, <clears throat> now I have a EP, I got a sparkle brush here. Uh, you can wrap this, same thing, I'm like a notorious pinch wrapper <laughs> material. So you can, you can wrap this in, you can tie it in, actually, you know what, let's, let's do that. All right, but you don't want a lot, you only really want one wrap. So I'm extending this forward just because, let's keep it locked in. So you have all this, just spread this out a little bit, bring it down and up. And that's, that's really, that's enough. Cause see, it's just like a skirt. All right, now bring this in the front, find some scissors. You don't really need the tips, use the back. All right. With that tied in now be careful where your where your wire is push that down and cover that up all right grab a little more let's go back to the purple all right so you're gonna pinch that in 
and slide it around. And remember, you want those spaces in there so it doesn't get matted down. You can also do like a red spot on either side, like a gills or something. It's art, I mean, what is fly tying? It's arts and crafts for adults, you know? A lot of us, we can't sit still, drink a lot of coffee. All right. So another pinch here. Now, as you're getting towards the front, all right, so we have a good amount of room here, but you want to make sure you have enough room. So trim up whatever's near the eye. Get out of there. And just cover it up a bit. All right, now find your... Find your fish skull because, so when you put these on, like this, the, we need more material in here. But when you put these on, you, you're going to be taking your thread and cutting it off and putting it back on. So if you push this on, see how much room is here? That's too much room. You can use dubbing. You can use a lot of things. This is the front where I start to palmer the hackle because right now this is not, you want it to be about here. So now is when you want to. It's a good time to palmer it because you gotta, you got you can use the bulk. All right, so grab a piece here, and this is this is a little strange way to do it, but for me it works. So instead of tying this in by the tip and wrapping it backwards, you know, instead of like tying it in facing this way and coming back, I'm gonna tie it in facing out. So if you have a, if you have one that is all straight see how like you would use this for like a woolly bugger tail because the tips are straight if that's what you have snip it out and make a little bit of a v and you're going to tie it in the front facing the back of your hook and you're not tying it in you're really just like you're not you're, you're tying it in but you're spreading it around the hook so see here you have the tips pointing back and now take a few tight wraps because now take your skull again and you know it's not enough but now what you're going to do is you're going to bring your thread forward you're going to twist this and you're going to bring it down and up but not too crazy just enough and don't cut it off yet, because if you mess it up, you can always let it go. That's the so when you make a mistake, just let it go. Take your hand off of it, take your thread off of it, and then start over. It's not, you know, I do it. We all do it. Um, so now, before you cut this off, pull it back and put your skull on again. See now you have enough room. Sometimes you put them on upside down, you know, but for the most part. Push this on there pretty tight. All right, that's good. So now you can cut this off. And don't cut it short. Cut it a little high because you, you want it to fill in under that fish skull. So wrap through it. Bring your thread to the front. And now you can trim it because if you trim it first, those pieces will come out. I have so many scissors on the bench. Every time I cut, I grab another pair. <laughs> They're laying around. All right, so with this like this, now one last check because if you don't have enough room, you can add some dubbing. Let's see. Yes, yeah, so maybe a little bit. All right, so you got that in there. Um, I use, so you can use UV. I use the UV for the eyes. I use Loctite for the head. So this, this stuff... <clears throat> Um, works great. Just cut the end off. It makes a mess. This is the gel. But take your whip finisher. You're going to just lock this off. And you're going to cut this off. Because you're going to retie your thread on once you finish this. So one last time. Just double check. I mean, they're going to fish every way. See, you have that gap back there. See that? 
I don't want that. So that's it. Tie it on. Put a little more. <laughs> Trial and error. <clears throat> that's how these fish skulls are, though. Until you get the hang of them, you're going to find um, that you're, you're going to put a few extra pieces on. You're going to get aggravated. It happens. And then you'll get the hang of it, and it'll be quick. It'll be a lot quicker. Um, all right. So that one last piece to fill it in. And hey, S Steve, I got to call you back. I got your voicemail. Um, the other day we play phone tag. Sorry about that. Um, All right, so that's cut, and now cut your, cut your, here, see all this in here? Cut these off. All right, now, one more time. Double check, make sure this fits. I gotta cut this off. All right, so this is, this is good. Now you can put on, you can put on your, your Loctite. Oh, this is going to drive me. Get out of there. All right. So you're going to put this on here. The gel is nice because it, it sits. It doesn't, it doesn't get matted down on the inside. It also squishes out the back and drives you nuts. But oh. <laughs> if we're going to tie flies, let's do it like we all normally do, you know. All right, <laughs> so now there, and you just want to clean up where you have some of the stuff coming out. And there's a few ways to do it. Sometimes I just take a stem that's laying around, and I bring it down and up and pull it off. Because you don't want to smush it. You're going to get it into the feathers. But if you go back and up, and you get it off like that. So now, while that's drying, you got to put your eyes on. And then we are almost done. I know the eyes, the eyes can be tricky and you can use the Loctite. You can use the UV stuff. You can, you can get feathers stuck to your backdrop. Okay. All right. So when you put these eyes on, what I do is I'll take, you know, take your, take your bodkin. And before you put anything on here. You can use the lo the Loctite if you want. Um, I'm actually probably just going to use that. So when you want to get these off of here, don't use your fingers. I find them stuck to the dog. I find them I find them stuck to my leg. Um, what you want to do is you want to take your take your bodkin. Oh, there I took an extra one off. Take your bodkin and just put your finger on the eye itself and stick your bodkin under it. And it's going to stick right to your, right to that. Now, before you do anything else, um, put your adhesive to the back of the eye. So instead of putting this on here, you can, the gel actually would probably be fine. Um, so like, say you put a little bit of gel, but you can put it on the back, hold your finger here. My hands are dirty from that marabou. Sorry guys. And now put... A little bit on here while you're holding it. Sometimes you're going to glue it to your finger, but whatever. Um, all right, so with this on here like this, now turn it over. You have a little bit on there. You have a little bit on here. These are the most aggravating thing to put on. So this is hopefully will help a little bit. Um, and you put it right over. This is how you get it stuck to your finger. And now then you're good. Um, you can also coat this, coat this with some UV resin um, to keep it on there. But that's one way to keep the eyes a little more under control. And, you know, in a pack of 12, you're going to probably end up using six. And six are stuck somewhere. But same thing. Put your bodkin underneath it. And right there. Put a little drop on here. Not too much because you're going to coat it with the UV stuff. And put your finger on the back. A little bit more. And then you're going to put that on your, this one is stuck to my finger. Too much. <laughs> we jinxed it. All right. So this one. All right. So we got this here. 
And then that is, yeah, this one is stuck to me. So we're going to skip that eye <laughs> until we can get it off. But um, I'll run through some of the, the questions while I'm finishing finishing this guy up. I don't know what time it is because I don't, I don't have a clock near me. Um, but yeah, if you guys, if you guys have any questions, um, you know, just leave them in the, in the comments and I will, I'll, I'll log back in on my, my account and I'll answer them and I'll put some, I'll put some close up photos into the chat, um, into the comments section. So you guys can see some of the things I was talking about that were harder to see up close. And, but now that I, I, you know, now that I see how, how much we can see. I can do a little bit small. I can do some smaller flies. I suck with the streamers tonight because I wasn't sure the quality would be okay for you guys to see. Um, but yeah, thanks. Thanks, Ed. Um, yeah, so if you, if you guys have any questions, um, like I said, leave them in the, leave them in the comments. And, um, you know, thanks for, thanks for bearing with me on this, uh, my first, my first, uh, you know, <laughs> uh live stream here but um all right thanks thanks again guys and uh i will i will answer some of those questions in the chat after um after this upload so you can view it again later and uh have a good night thanks so much